Do you believe he will prove doubters wrong in this postseason? Well, one, it's not about proving your doubters wrong because it doesn't matter what you do, you're always going to have a bunch of doubters. I mean, that's what people do, right? Especially with the advent of uh, social media. That's what you know, people just sit on there and troll you and, and doubt you, and that's the way it goes. He said he was going to be measured by his playoff success, right? He said, one, that it's not about stats. It's about wins and losses. Well, you're 0-1 in the playoffs, and you played exceptionally well when you got there, but ultimately your team did not win that game. That's what it comes down to for me is, do you play well enough to, to give your team an opportunity? The, the thing I love about the National Football League, it's the ultimate team game. Like, everybody has to – we're all dependent on one another. You can't catch a ball if I don't block my guy. You can't catch a ball if, you know, the quarterback doesn't have time to, to establish and, and throw you the route. I mean, it's just the way the National Football League works, and that's what I love about it. But, you know, if you're out there going, I'm going to go prove my doubters wrong, I, that – that to me is never the motivation. You want it's not about proving your doubters wrong. It's prove, about proving the team and and your teammates correct, right? For having faith in you, and it's about going out there and sacrifices for those guys. So that's really what you're playing for. I like your point about it's not about proving the doubters wrong. However, in this case, when it comes to Dak Prescott, I like him speaking out. I like him mm -hmm. in this mode because in Week 14, if we look back, when Philly called him out, he ends up having a career day. 455 passing yards, three, some, three touchdowns, 78% mm -hmm. completion percentage. Phenomenal game. I like what he's done in the postseason, his rookie year. Right. Again, another phenomenal showing, over 300 yards passing, 100-yard rusher, 100-yard receiver. But it came all down to the guy across the field, Aaron Rodgers. And that's what it will come down to this Saturday, the guy across the field. It still wasn't good enough. I think he will prove his doubters wrong, yeah. but I don't think it will be enough. Yeah. I'm kind of with you, Greg. I, I just don't know if he can prove anybody wrong. Like, if they win with the ground game, hey, Zeke Elliott was tremendous. If Dak has a great game passing, well, Amari Cooper, he went bananas. Or it was the defense shutting down the Saints. For some reason, whether it's the media, whether it's under other NFL players or fans, they don't want to give Dak the credit. I don't know if this goes back to Tony Romo, who was beloved, we know. Uh, or maybe it's Dak's inability to perform in the red zone. Guys, he was one of the worst red zone quarterbacks this year. 51% completions. That's worse than any other quarterback in the playoffs if you remove Lamar Jackson, who only started seven games. But Dak's got to get it done in the red zone. You can't settle for threes against Russell Wilson. I think that's going to be the, the key to this game. And uh, I kind of hope he does prove them wrong. This guy's an underdog, right? Mid-round draft pick. Nobody thought Dak Prescott will be in another playoff game just three years into the NFL. For, for me, it's not, it's not about proving anybody wrong or right because it's what you said. Dak Prescott's not going to get his credit. If they win the game, it's going to be, oh, Amari Cooper played great or the running game was great or the defense. He's not going to get his credit. For some reason, we like to pick on Dak Prescott like he's not good enough. Now, with that being said, it, you, you talk about his red zone percentage. The Dallas Cowboys, offensively, they're not very creative. You watch their red zone concepts, they're not very creative. It's, we're going to run this route, you got to win. We're not going to get a bunch of alignments and get guys open. You know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. where the, the system will get guys open. Certain coaches do a great job of getting you open. Mm -hmm. Other coaches, the receivers have to get open. And so for me, Dak Prescott, just go play well. Whatever happens, happens, because I don't believe he's going to get credit either way because it's going to they're going to give it to somebody else anyway. Yeah, I, you know what's interesting, though? For me, and I look at the way this offense is going to be orchestrated in the playoffs, I, I think one of the things that's happened, when you look back to his rookie year, so much more of the collegiate system that they were running. I think he's got an old soul. I actually like Dak Prescott. I like him as a quarterback. And I think he's a good quarterback. I think when he was performing at his peak efficiency, there was a lot more RPO stuff, one receiver routes, using him in the red zone to run the ball. That's where he's going to flourish. Now, I think the Dallas Cowboys have understood that is not a long-term recipe for health and success, right? So we're going we're gonna to mold him into a more traditional type of quarterback. But at this point, you're in the playoffs. Man, Katie bar the door. You go back to the collegiate stuff that he's best at. Like, running the ball, there needs to be seven, eight designed runs for quarterback runs, especially in the red zone. A bunch of RPO aspects to your, you know, where you're and flagging see, that Seattle, ball. And, Seattle, they're not, they're not a confuse you type of defense. No. We're going to line up. We're going to play single high safety, one safety in the middle, and we're coming after you. We're yeah. going to man your receivers up. 
Play an eight-man box. We're going to play cover three in a, a matchup zone. Now, now listen, in the do. first That's meeting, I, I believe it was week three, he did not have Amari Cooper. So hopefully, you know, the offense won't be as bad as they were in the first meeting because they could not move the football w- against Seattle in that first I game. I want to go back to something the both of you said about Dak Prescott not being able to prove any of his doubters wrong. I, I, think, I think that is a little different from my point of view because when I look at him last season, he had a great opportunity in front of him when Ezekiel Elliott was out of the, out of the lineup those six games to prove everyone wrong, to make sure that this is his team, I can win with or without Ezekiel Elliott. He failed to do that, and I think that's when <laughs> – ah, yeah. I would say, I would say <laughs> how many quarterbacks actually yeah. are constructed that way? There's like, not one quarterback and, and remember, in the league except for Tom Brady that can win with nothing. Des Bryant was a no, total non-factor last year. I, they ended up dumping him. Right. Like, Jason Witten about to go to the I agree. Game, so. I agree with all of that, but he didn't perform well. It wasn't even about winning necessarily. He just didn't perform well. And I think that's where we put so much onus on – Dak Prescott, is he going to step up? Can he perform in the big games? Can he be the difference maker without his marquee guys stepping up for him? Greg, do you think that Brady is a top five quarterback this season? Now, I'm going to get a lot of yes you are with this. I don't think he's a top five quarterback this season. I don't. In, in, in this list, we got Drew Brees, Patrick mm-hmm. Mahomes, Andrew Luck, Phillip Rivers. We saw the names. But – we're missing Russell Wilson. Yes. Russell Wilson, in my opinion, is number five. And when you look at the numbers, passer rating, Tom Brady is number 12, Russell Wilson number three. 19th in completion percentage is Russell Wilson. 18th is Tom Brady. You go down the yards per pass attempt. Ninth is Russell Wilson. 13th is Tom Brady. Third is Russell Wilson in touchdown passes this year. All the all. Out of all the quarterbacks, Russell Wilson is third. Tom Brady is 10th. 18th, Russell Wilson is passing yards. Seventh is Tom Brady. These numbers let me know. If we're going, if this is what we're going off of, Russell Wilson is better quarterback right now. And he's had to work with the best rushing team in all of football. Meaning, when, when I mentioned the passing yards, yeah, his passing yards are going to be less because he's not had to throw as much. Right. Well, I, I will tell you, this is why I would disagree with you, and I think Russell Wilson's phenomenal. Don't, don't get me wrong. But Tom Brady's the world's greatest American. Okay? That's <laughs> just, let's, let's put that out there right now, okay? But I will, I will tell you this. Like, I did their first game of the season. I, their first two games. I didn't do their second game, but their first two games. Pete Carroll told me in a meeting, like, we tried to make this a passing offense. That was our mistake. We tried to say, hey, this is the way we're going to be. This has to be run first basically control the line of scrimmage, open up your play-action game. That's where Russell Wilson's going to thrive. Russell Wilson was horrible in the first two games of the season. They run it at a 55%. They run it far by far more than anybody else in the National Football League. I think 55% of their plays are run plays. It sets up the play-action. It creates one-on-one just unbelievable matchups for them in the passing game. So I, I look at it like Tom Brady, you said this earlier, Tom Brady is the only guy in America – they can have nothing around him, and still, to me, still, what, what do we do? We need to run it. Do we need to throw it? Do we need to get it to our backs? Do we need to throw it down the football field? Whatever the case may be, Gronk wasn't the same Gronk that he was. I mean, Tom Brady still, for me, is in. I don't care where you rank him, and if you want to put Russell in the top five, great. I'll pull somebody else. But Tom Brady is not coming out of my top five. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll let you go, TJ, because yeah, I, I'm, I gotta I'm, calm down first. I, I'm with you on that. It, it's Tom Brady has to be in the top. You, you just look at what he's working with. And I said this earlier. I went back and watched some tape of Gronk from 2011 and 12. Just watch him move then and watch him move now. It's Tom Brady. Like, you look at Russell Wilson. Anytime you go to a run-first offense, your own coach is saying, he ain't good enough to just throw the ball and win the game for us. Your own coaching staff is telling you, we don't think you're good enough to win the game with your arm. That's what Tom Brady does. Tom Brady... He doesn't have one skilled player on his team I, I don't that think, will start for anybody else in the league. I don't think he's saying we're, you're not good enough to Just, win the game because when the game is on the line in the fourth quarter, you're not running the football. Early you're relying season, on Early Russell in the Wilson. season, it showed. That's why they went to a right. run-dominant offense because they were trying to throw the ball. They weren't winning games. Well, uh, the Edelman, late, late, Edelman was suspended late, early. Late, late, and, and the late stuff is the fourth quarter, the last minute and a half, yeah. But to me, that's schoolyard. 
That is, hey, run around, extend the play, be schoolyard, not not operate from the pocket. And let's remember, Russell Russell Wilson Wilson also did not have Doug Baldwin for chunks of the season. Since he's been back, they've been tremendous. Uh, I think I'm with Greg here. Uh, Without question, Russell Wilson's above Brady. And again, if you just want to look at the pure numbers, and as you guys said, who they're working with, okay? How come Baker Mayfield doesn't crack this top five? If you look across the board, his numbers, just the stats, with three fewer games... His numbers are right there with Tom Brady, and he's throwing to a guy at tight end who's nowhere near Gronk's level. Come on, Why? man. No, no, wait. Come on, man. You're, you're, Look you at the stats. You cannot go off the years past. Gronkowski is not Gronkowski this oh, okay, year. Okay, fine. You, I'll give you fine. I'll give you that. And Joku okay. is a baller. He also we know that. And Joku Josh is Gordon. a baller. Fine, 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 fine. He's okay. a baller. I mean, if we're, hey, if you're Josh Gordon was with the Patriots for half the season. He was tremendous. Okay, Edelman came back. Good receiver. Who's Baker Mayfield working with? Antonio Callaway? Really? When he Jarvis start, Landry? When he, when I'm Jarvis telling you, if Landry you want to go play Antonio by play. Antonio Callaway start for the New England Patriots? Would of they, course. 100%. Of course. Would the Patriots receivers start in Cleveland? Absolutely what? not. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Seriously, you're benching Edelman. I, listen, Edelman Tom Brady has better one. receivers and he probably than wouldn't anybody start. He'd on He'd be them. the third receiver. Look, I mean, Andrew Luck's guys aren't Just, starting anywhere. They weren't even in the well, league. We, was that's, not even that's, another, that's another false statement that people make. Andrew Luck has nobody. T.Y. Hilton has been balling in the league for five, six, seven years. Has he not? He has. He's 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 going to Eric Ebron, a guy who was kicked out of Detroit. Nobody wanted him. Edmonds a receiver. He was drafted for a reason. I mean, so all of a sudden the Patriots supporting cast stinks. Is that where we're going? Is that what you really want to hang your hat on? You are not the only guy. Come on, man. I I will tell you this. Now, having called the Cleveland game, they are an incredibly talented football yes. team. And I'm telling you, offensive line-wise, I would put their inside three guys. They're good. Shredder, B- Botonio, and um, and their right guard. Uh, uh, he's escaping my mind. But I would put their inside three guys against any inside three in the national football. So, so skill position. You think Tom Brady has not very that good play. Is that what we're, we're saying? Time out, time out. Me. They're, no. I, you're asking me. He I, does. Compared to other quarterbacks in the league. I'm just Drew shocked. Drew Brees, you got a Michael Thomas. Patrick Mahomes got Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey. Phillip Rivers, you have Keenan Allen, you got Mike Williams, you got Melvin Gordon. You name, people want to say Gronkowski. Gronkowski is a shell of himself. Dude, did you see when they put him on? I, I, he, I had him on my fantasy team. He let me down. Okay? I watched Gronk way too it closely this to everybody. year. everybody. It's Trust happened me, to it was Gronk not good. sooner than you would have liked and you would have thought. But Tom Brady is, as he said, the world's right. greatest to win and do what he's doing with what he has. It's remarkable. I've got one last thing. One last, there la- one last point of order. There is no greater skill than moving a man from point A to point B against his will. And if you want to play catch in here, we can do that. But if we open up, if we if we do one-on-ones, I'll open a can of whoop-ass on you right now. All right? I'm, just I'm moving you. right out right. the way. I don't want none of that. I don't think anyone could argue that Tom Brady shouldn't be yeah. in question in this top five yeah. conversation. But All was right. the season great Russell for Wilson. him? Was it great? Russell Wilson, you got to argue his case as well. 